Hello everybody, 4.30 a.m. out in the workshop, time to get at it. I pulled the next plane off the pile, took it apart, and found out that the tote's broken. Couldn't see that when it was all together and nice and tight, so this video is going to be on how to repair a tote. Let's take a look at the problem. I took apart what was a great looking number four, and it still is, and as I was loosening up the handle on the tote, I find out that it's broke. So today I'm going to show you how to fix those the easy way. When you've got a nice clean brake like what this one is, you'll have pretty good luck putting them back together and you will not be able to see that it was ever broke. The tools you're going to need for this is some gloves, electrical tape, and I like to use Gorilla Glue. That's why you need the gloves. First thing you want to do is put on your gloves. I've only had one tote break that I've repaired and I've repaired probably hundreds of them and that's because uh, I, I, it was screwed up when I did it. Can't explain why. So you take your, grill, your Gorilla Glue This stuff expands. It foams up, gets real hard, and it will actually fill in the uh, drill hole where the bolt goes through to lock your tote down onto the body of the plane. Take both halves, squeeze them together. That excess glue that comes out. I wipe it off. You get this stuff on your hands and it is some really bad stuff. It does not wash off. It turns black. It doesn't look good at all. Okay, when you put it together, you can run your fingers over it and you can feel the edge. You want to make sure everything lines up like it's supposed to line up. And that's what I've got right now. That's the hardest part. Well, almost the hardest part. The hardest part then is taking your electrical tape and taping it together without losing the position. So this first round, as you can see, I'm not applying any, any pressure with the tape. I'm just getting a good, good lineup. Now, I'm holding the toad in place between my, my thumb and my fingers. And now I'm stretching the electrical tape just a little bit. Coming around the other side, doing the same thing. Stretching that tape is like putting a clamp on it. All the way around. It takes a little practice. If you're not careful, you'll find out that it'll slide on you. Which is okay. So first piece of tape is on. Now I feel it again. Did not slide. There's what it looks like. Sometimes that can be enough. Usually I go where the where the brake is. And I do another another wrap around the tote. That's it. You gotta let that stuff sit for a minimum of two hours. I usually leave it sit overnight and don't work on it till the next day. So I did a lot of internet searching years ago 
for advice on how to uh, repair totes. Tried them, didn't like them. This is what I've had the most success with. I think it's the easiest. And it's worked on some really horrible looking totes as far as the brakes were not, not clean at all. Missing wood around the edges. As long as you've got probably three quarters of the surface in there that is still going to bond together nice and tight and even, you're going to get a good repair. That Gorilla Glue holds and it, it should not break in the same place again. So let's uh, wait and pick this up after it dries. 24 hours have passed and it's time to take the tape off the tote. Here it is. So this is what it looks like right now. All glued together. The next step is going to be to scrape it. For scraping I use a little homemade scraper that I put together. Piece of wood with a groove cut in it and it holds a, a razor knife. And the way you make it work is a scraper is you gotta get a burr on this edge right here. And the way I get my burr is I come over here to my my sandpaper and you can see a lot of stuff has been <laughs> been uh, a lot of metal on, on this sandpaper but I place it at an angle straight down 90 90 degrees flat to the surface can it to one side Make a few passes. And that's usually good enough right there. Then I'll get myself a burr on the edge and I'm ready to scrape. I repeat that process when the burr wears off. You can, you can tell when it's not scraping good. You just do it again. The scraping part's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of doing this over the entire tote. You can see when the finish is off, when you're getting down to the wood. When you've got a good burr on it, it usually will not put scratches into your wood. That's something you want to look for. So I've skipped through about two minutes of the scraping just to get down to the end. And you can see it's a pretty easy thing to do. When you do your finishing part of the scraping, you've got all the finish off. You're down to bare rosewood. You want to make sure you kind of hit it with the grain. And where the break was, which you can't see anymore, but you want to use that scraper to get perfectly even surfaces where the two pieces came together. If for any reason they weren't exactly where they're supposed to be, This is how you do it. You work right around where the crack was, making sure it's a seamless transition between the two pieces, completely invisible. And that's it. You can't see it. I've learned from experience that sanding won't work. It'll, it'll work for final finish, but what it won't do for you is is get two uneven surfaces perfectly even where you can't see where they went together again. Best way to do that is scraping. You can control the amount of rosewood that you're removing a whole lot better. But that's the next step is to sand the tote. I like to use the old rubber sanding blocks. They're more for auto body work. I don't know why. It's just I like it's what I've always done. But the sanding is pretty straightforward. You do it with the grain. I start with 300, I'm sorry, I start with 150 grit paper on this, and then I move on to the, the foam sanding block. You whip the grain all around the entire tote, and then we'll see what it looks like. 
So I fast forwarded through all the boring parts of the sanding. I've got the tote. The initial sanding with the 150 grit paper is done. There it is. And now what I do is I move on to the foam sanding blocks. I like the way the foam conforms to the shape and that's the next step in the sanding. Again you do it with the grain. Always looking for scratches and making sure that you're removing them within reason. If they're really deep you can't remove them. So that's it for the sanding block. I did find some fine scratches on one part. I went back to the 150 grit to remove them and then back over with the sanding block. Next thing is to move on to either a 3 or a 4 aught steel wool. Doesn't make much difference. The steel wool that I'm using is 3 aught. Again, you primarily want to go with the grain, and this is where it really starts to shine. And you can see if there's uh, scratches or any old finish still left on your tote. 